Hey, what's up everybody? This is Vodka here with a new video on my scoreboard overlay that I've been working on the past few days. So, if you've been watching any of our streams, you'll know that we uh, try to up the production value a little bit. And we have these animated overlays for the names and the scores of the players. We even have the results in the next up. So in order to do that, it's actually um, a web overlay that you put on top of your whatever your graphics are on OBS. And then you have to control the web overlay and then it'll update it based on some sort of a control. And since most people I think use stream control for their controls, which is a Windows app. Now I initially was going to use stream control, but I had a Mac and I couldn't use it on a Mac because it was only for Windows. So I decided to write my own stuff to be able to control the stream information and the scoreboards. And that took a while and I wasn't didn't really know what I was doing. So initially I slapped together just some UI because I didn't know what I was doing, so here it is. The initial UI that I made, I just slapped it together with some fields so I can get some information in here. And this is how we, for the most part, controlled our scoreboards for the like the past year or two that uh, I've been doing the streaming, so I just use this thing. It's functional, it's not very pretty. And I got tired of looking at it and I always wanted to rebuild it, so recently, past few days, I, did, I went and actually rebuilt a new version which looks like this. So. Now it's a little more pleasing to the eye and also it has the same functions and a little organized a little better and who knows we might redesign it again but at least now it's you know anybody can use it and it makes sense. So for example you see the overlay in the back and this is how we use it is you know during the streams we just put the people's names here like name and you just type it in here and then you see it show up in there same with this. And this is all run with web and run with JavaScript. And I have a Python server in the back that's operating. This is a bunch of Python code that I wrote. So the web interface talks to the server, which gets the data, and then it updates it up here. And you can change the flags too. So it's all, all tied to this UI so we can control everything. Same with the score updates. And you can even reverse the names. Because you know that happens a lot. Teams. Looks like this button is not programmed in yet. I'll have to program that in. It's good testing it out. So there you go. So also you have the results. The results now will get auto -popul populated if you use the next round button. So let's do a little demonstration here. So next player. You see their names will show up here and then you know when this round is over let's say you know do one you just hit the next round and see the how the information from the previous round goes into the results automatically and then the next round information goes into the current round and so we try to automate it a little bit so we just have to put in the new next person's name to hit next and go and update the scores so a little less work for everybody so this is how the regular event scoreboard works. And and the next thing that I wanted to show is actually the top eight scoreboard that I made. And this thing took me quite a bit of time, like the last three days or so, I was just like hacking away at it, trying to get it to work. And you can see it's a lot more going on here than the regular event dashboard, but it does have the information of the event dashboard, such as the current players and the next rounds and the results. So what I wanted to do here is make my own custom top 8 bracket for our own graphics so I needed a dashboard to have all the information so I can make it appear like however we wanted to on our own top 8 brackets so we don't need to rely on something like start.gg and we should make it look a lot cooler and hopefully we'll be able to have something cool just over the next round and uh, I just want to demonstrate this a little bit on how we can do this so what I have done is created the brackets here so that we can input our own player information and make it go through the rounds automatically and have all the information auto populate. So let's just start by hitting the start button. So you can see the red right here is what is currently playing and the yellow is the next person that's coming up. And you can also set the next person to somebody else in case like these two people you can't find them or you're waiting on somebody to come back but these two people are here let's say we want to set this one to the next round and you can see the next round information has changed and then we can go through with the brackets 
So let's say player two, and then you just hit next round. You see the result information get populated here. And then the next round has the next person that this thinks should be going next. And since we set this one to be next, because this is the current one now, so these players and that goes to the top. So let's just run through the bracket real quick as a demonstration. And you can see it auto updating. Well, all the flags are also updating that we have. And one other thing is that it'll auto update the bracket name. So one thing we have problems with our with our tournaments was that we sometimes would forget to update like this bracket name up here. And we always have to like somebody has to remember and then we have to manually type it in. But with this tool it automatically knows what round you are and update this so that it'll be always be up to date. I'm moving through here. Now we're at the winner's finals. And now we get to the loser semis. So loser semis, you can see that the next player, it doesn't know who's gonna win yet. We're running low on players, right? We're getting to the, like, the top four. So it automatically puts winner as the next round here. Well so we have some placeholder for, for the name. And then you move to the next round and the names are correct, as you can see. And again, we have winner for the next person for the grand finals. Now we're at grand finals. And there's no more next players. And then what you can see is I actually made it automatically attach the, the loser's suffix to the player name so that we know who's in loser's rounds and who's in the winner's round. And you can also reverse names here. And that should still keep track of the scores correctly. And let's say the loser of the grand finals wins and resets, right? So now you have one more round. So they're both in losers now, as you can see with the names. And then we finish out with the last set, last game match of the grand finals. And then the results are all updated and that's it. That's, yep, yeah, that's the top 8 scoreboard. And hopefully this will automate away a lot of the manual tasks that we have to remember while running the tournaments. So it should make things run much smoother. And I'm hoping to try this out at our next tournament. And uh, if it works well, hopefully other people will have interest in doing this as well. And maybe I'll even be able to, in the future, host it somewhere so that it doesn't have to be locally on your computer and it can be hosted somewhere on the internet and then you can just hit it and have your own dashboard running. So that would be the cool thing, but that's very far in the future. We'll see if we do that. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you like this content, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.